Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author, and we are going to be working on the block of the month. And this month, for March, the block of the month is a Sawtooth Star. This is one of my favorite patterns ever. Um, I love the star pattern in quilting. And it pains me to say, that I had never made my first one until just recently. Actually, it was probably, oh, I don't know, probably about six months back. I made one for a very special little girl that was born. Anyway, we're gonna move right along. So here's what you are going to need. Now I am working with two fabrics. I am working with fat quarters. So I used two fat quarters and then I cut them for this project, okay? You do not need to be concerned with all of the measurements right now because I will um, put these on my blog at, at craftyauthor.com. And also, it's always linked down below here in the description box. So if you miss any of this, just look down below and you'll see the link to my blog. Click on that. It'll take you there right to where you need to be and you can see the whole thing, okay? So no need to worry. All right, so what I am going to need is, like I said, the two fabrics is what I'm working with. You are more than welcome to work with more than one. You can use scraps, you can use yardage, you can use fat quarters, you can use, um, you can also use charm squares, you can use a layer cake as long as you cut it up. I don't care. Use whatever you have in your stash. That's what this is for, okay? So you're gonna need one five and a half inch square. Um, mine is a darker color. This is the color that I will be working with today. Beautiful salmon color. And then um, you will need four three inch squares. Those are gonna go in the corners. I am going to be using these darker little squares that match my um, my big square. And then you will need four three and a half inch squares of a dark, darker contrasting fabric and four three and a half inch squares of a lighter contrasting fabric. What I mean by that is you are going to need a lighter square and you're going to need some sort of a darker square. Okay, so you choose whatever you want yours to be. So we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do and Let's get this star done. Okay, my friends, here's what we are going to do. I, when I ironed these, this is just a little tip, okay? Um, when I was doing my um, pressing of my fabric, my two fat quarters to take the wrinkles out, what I did was I put my fabrics right sides facing each other so that when I cut them, they were all ready right sides facing each other. Okay, that way I don't have to sit there and fiddle with it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ruler, a small ruler. And um, I say small because it's just easier because these are such smaller pieces. But if you have only a large ruler, that's gonna work just fine too. Or if you have like a school ruler, that'd be perfect. I'm gonna take a pen, a regular pen. You can use a pencil. Um, anything. Okay, maybe I should use a pencil. I'm going to just mark my fabric right here from corner to corner. Okay, and I'm going to do this on the light side of my fabric. Just like that. You guys have seen me do this many a time. I'm going to pop a pin in the center of this just for right now to hold this together because I don't want it to shift, okay? We have three more that we need to do this to. And as you can see, I've already got some shifting here. So I really wanna be careful. Um, it's not gonna matter if you use a pen or a pencil because you're never gonna see this. There is some I watched a YouTube video yesterday and I have to tell you, I was really disappointed 
And I don't normally make comments like this, but I think I'm gonna make this comment. Um, I was watching this one YouTuber and she, she was showing how to do some quilting stuff and she was pointing out every single mistake that she's ever made and it just broke my heart. And not only that, then she continued to tell people that um, how they were doing things was wrong. Like, it, it, this is what it left me feeling like, okay? If you don't feel like you can ever do anything right, then why would you even want to continue on with what you're what you're doing you know i mean it just broke my heart i was just i was i was really sad for her i really really was and um i don't ever want to make anybody feel like that so please understand that we all make mistakes it's okay and you know what not everything is perfect i mean and the to try and do something is better than not to do it at all right that's my motto so you know what do you that's what i do i just be myself i don't care i don't care what other people think so anyway that's my fancy advice for the day but man it was just it was heartbreaking listening to her just trash on herself um anyway i'm going to pull out the sewing machine and i'm going to show you how we do this um but basically what we want to do is we want to stay, you see this line here? We want to line our quarter inch foot right here along this line, and we are gonna sew a quarter of an inch on this side. And then we are going to sew a quarter of an inch also on this side. We're gonna do that to all four of these pieces right here. These are our three and a half inch pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's gonna be a blast. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain piece these two items here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my pin out. If you're interested in this beautiful sewing machine, I have it linked to the shop, uh, my Amazon um, store. You can see where where I purchased it from, because I actually got this off of Amazon as well. It's a great buy. And um, if you do make a purchase though, I will make a small commission. And so I have to, I have to tell you that, but um, yeah, it's worth it. This machine has been awesome. So as you can see, right? I'm just chain piecing and now I'm going to just turn it around and we're just going to sew it on the other side. That's all. Another quarter inch. All right, so I'll, since I chain stitched this, I just need to clip these threads that um, are holding this in between. So I'm just going to do that real quick. No, I'm just using a big piece of, or a big pair of scissors probably should just use my little snips, but you know, we just use what's around here and what works. All right, so now that those are done, so we're gonna need our smaller ruler again, and we're going to need our rotary cutter. So all I'm going to do is line this up, my ruler on that center line. You can also cut this with a pair of scissors. It's just a little bit faster to do this with a rotary cutter. And I am just going to do this to all four of the pieces that we just sewed together. I'm going to keep them together. Um, and the reason that I keep all my little pieces together, so like when I cut these two, they stay together, is because if I were to take this one and maybe mix it up with one of these, um, maybe I sewed a little wonky or I didn't sew it quite as straight, and that would throw off my square. So that is why I always keep those together. It's a little trick that I've learned over the years. So keep them together. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna press these open. And I am going to press them open to the dark side. All right, so I wanna give you a tip before you start doing after you press your um, your fabric. You are going to want to lay this out 
your star pattern because you want to make sure that all of your points are going to be pointing out um, before you start sewing these together. So you can see that these are still in their block form. And now I've got them laid out. And so I know how I'm going to do this now. Because if you sew them together and you don't have them flipped the right way, this is not going to turn out the way that you want it to. So I am going to go ahead and um, I'm going to cut these dog ears off. And I'm actually going to trim these down to three inches. This is actually a really great thing to have. Um, it is just, it makes it a lot easier to, um, I don't know what I am trying to say, to trim, <laughs> to move things around. Yes, it does. It makes it a lot easier. I have a small ruler here. Um, it's really filthy. You can't see anything through it. Probably should get a different one, but it'll work for now. I want to trim this block down to three inches. Okay, so I'm gonna try and move you in close. As you can see, I have this lined up on the diagonal here on my seam line. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going to trim these off and then I'm going to trim off this dog ear down here. So we're gonna do that right now. And I am just making sure that everything is good and lined up, and it is. And then I'm just going to cut, and I'm going to cut. Wow, that doesn't want to come off. It would like to stay there all day. Then I'm going to flip this. And I am going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to line up on this line and I'm going to make sure that everything is perfect. Okay. Because you want to make sure that you have all sides even. As you can see, all sides are not. I still have a little bit up here where I was talking about that dog ear. But I had that little booger there too. So trimmed. Now we're at perfect three inches. Okay. Okay, so I have these laid out on my little cutting mat, like so. I just brought this over. And all I'm gonna do is start piecing these together. So I'm gonna take my two, my two top pieces that are right here, and I'm going to flip them over and I'm just going to sew them together. And you're going to want your points to meet up. So you're going to want to make sure that you have your uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> your seams um, butt up together. You don't want to be in this situation, I can tell you that. I'm just stuck. No! So I had a little jam up um, with my needle and thread. And here is what I want to show you. So this is my Singer Quantum Stylus 9960 that I sewed on for years and years and years before I got my Janome and became extremely spoiled rotten. Um, here is why it is very important to clean out your sewing machine. I am ashamed to tell you this, but I have not cleaned out this sewing machine. So, you know, I'm actually probably pretty lucky that when the thread got stuck, <laughs> that it really wasn't worse than what it could have been. Um, so this is why we clean out our sewing machine. I'm going to, I gosh, guys, I'm really embarrassed to show you this, but I'm going to anyway. I have this little cleaning brush. You can see it's filled with gross, yucky funk all over it. 
I like to use a piece of batting, scrap batting. This is what I use when I clean out my machines. Look at that. Gross. That's, I, oh my goodness, I have not. I probably haven't cleaned this machine out since I last used it, which was, it's been probably about two years and God only knows when the cleaning before that happened, right? This is terrible, embarrassing, but I want you to see it because you know what? It happens, life happens, we all get going, we get busy, we don't think about these things and this is what we get. Do you see that? Do you see that big chunk of crap? Gross. So, yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, I, I also am guilty of this. So please make sure that you clean your machines and please make sure that you get them serviced at least once a year because it will help you to maintain your machine and keep it much longer and keep it running smoother. And um, these machines are not cheap. As you know, you want to, you know, you want to have them around for a while. So if we take care of our machines, they'll last us for a, a really long time. Okay, now that that little fiasco is over and done with. Oh boy. I did go ahead and sew these pieces together and I pressed the seams open on this. Now what I'm going to do is take one of my corners and I'm going to sew it on the edge here. It is sewing much better too, by the way. Sounds so much nicer. Okay, I'm gonna press this one outward with my finger. I'm just gonna finger press, okay? And I will press it at the iron here in a, in a bit, but you see what we have here. Now I'm gonna take the other one from our other top portion here. These are our corners that we cut. I'm just gonna, oops, I'm so used to pressing that foot pedal down and just having it go. That's not how this program works, not today. Okay, again, I'm gonna press it outward. So these ones, these seams are going out. The reason I pressed the, uh, the uh, center blocks the reason why I press those open is because to cut down on the bulk. So our top block is done. It is sewn together. Let's do the next one, which will be the bottom, okay? We're not gonna do the sides yet. We're only focused on the bottom. And I am just going to line up these seams right here because I want my points to match. Okay. Sorry, my fingers are in the way going to take this and I'm just going to do a quick finger press and press that seam open. Just right there. Just like that. And then I will have something that looks like that. I'm going to press or press. So my square on to the side. This goes so quickly you guys. This is actually why this is one of my favorite patterns now because it's so quick. I mean, really, the hardest part is cutting. And that's easy. So I'm going to push this one out as well. The seam, I'm just going to press it outwards. Just make sure these are nice and lined up. And they are. Okay. Oh, 
Come on, baby. You can do it. Okay. Pressing again outward. Now our bottom one is done. Yay. We're moving right along. Okay. So the next one is going to be our sides. So it's the same process. It's going to take the two squares. You're going to put them up together. You're going to sew down. All righty. So we've got all of our stuff done. Okay. We've got everything sewn. So I've got my top one done. So I can put that there, my top piece. Then I have my bottom piece sewn together now. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we need to get our our side pieces on here, okay? But the way that we're going to do this is we're going to pull our bottom piece and our top piece, and we are going to set those aside for right now. We are going to attach these two pieces, these side pieces to our center piece. Because if we were to try and put the top and bottom pieces onto this square, they won't match up right now. Okay, if you're anything like me and you just tried to sew this to the top and it didn't line up, I'm going to show you how we fix that. You're going to want to take, you want to butt these up. You want to take, you want to make sure that, that your seams are going in opposite directions and mine are. So I want to make sure that this seems that they are locking. And then I'm going to just put a quilt clip right here. You can use a pen as well. Um, I'm going to force this thing to be straight. <laughs> I'm forcing it. It's going to line up, doggone it. Okay. This one here also needs to be lining up but it is a little bit off. So we're gonna fudge it just a tiny bit. And I locked it. I forced it to lock. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it actually might pucker just a tad. So I'm gonna flatten it out as much as I can and then I'm going to just kind of let it be. And that looks good. That looks good, okay? So now I'm gonna put this on my machine and I am going to start sewing it down and see how this is gonna work. And you're gonna love how it's gonna turn out. And so am I. Sometimes you just have to work with it and sometimes you have to fudge things a little bit too, okay? Sewing is not a perfect science. Let's see if I was able to do it. I don't even know. Well, I don't know why it's not lining up perfectly, but you know what? It is good enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to press it. And I'm gonna call it good. We'll call it a day. All right, so I'm gonna press this and then we'll come back and we will finish up. All right, that is it. And we are now finished. We now have block number three down in the books and it turned out fantastic. I am so happy with the way this turned out, you guys. I, you know what, our sampler quilt is going to be amazeballs. So again, I will put the measurements down below in the description box with a link to my um, my blog. That's where y'all need to get the exact measurements for this. And um, that's it. But here we go. Ta-da! How cool is that? Look at it. I am so excited. I mean, this was last time. This was last month's. In case you forgot, that was February's. And then we had 
January's, which was, which, the boy, can I talk today? Which was just a four patch. I have something special planned for this one. So it's not going to stay like this. That's the hint. But um, that will be coming much later. Okay? So don't you worry. But anyway, I just wanted to <laughs> show you this again because it's cool. So anyway, I just wanted to, um, to show you guys this. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know I did. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me clean out my sewing machine because, well, who knew that I hadn't done that? Embarrassing. Really, really embarrassing. But you know what? It's a reminder to you to make sure that you clean yours out too. I normally do it after every project. Um, I guess I just, at that point, at, when I had that sewing machine and was using it a lot, I didn't really realize how important it really was to keep your sewing machine clean. But now I do. So I'm spreading the word, clean your machine. <laughs> if you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. And don't forget to like this video and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it because sharing is caring. And do not forget to subscribe, guys. Click that little bell and you will get notified every time my crazy self posts a brand new video. <laughs> hey, it's fun here. I like to make quilting and crafting fun. So we laugh a lot on this channel. Anyway, that is it for me. Keep on crafting and I will see you guys next time. Bye.